Victory Monday for you, Victory Tuesday for me, the after effects. We're going to look at it of this game, but man, what a victory. Um, we got some things to talk about because, man, defense and offense, two different worlds apart. How you feel about them right now as far as the performance, but the most important thing is they came up in the clutch. And Jalen and the crew on offense, man, they did their job, but we do have something to nitpick at. What's up, it's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video and I kid you not, that's my real name. Eagles snap count analysis, week nine versus the Cowboys. Let's get it. That side relief, we all feel like that in Philadelphia and everywhere abroad. All right, the quarterback, Jalen Hurts. Um, obviously, he needs to play. We already go get to this section, you know. Um, but that being said, he came, he didn't come out of the game, but um, he did come up lame. After he, his uh, knee got contacted by Demarcus Lawrence's helmet, fortunately he wasn't uh, he wasn't due to miss any time. It was like a, towards the end of the half we got the ball back um, after they kicked the field goal, and man, it was just concerning seeing QB one uh, limping and in obvious you know pain, but he was able to gut it out. Didn't miss a snap. Went to the um, the locker room halftime. He went in early, but you know came out looking not spry but looking better than he um had before and actually came out in the third uh third quarter and scrambled a couple times bought some time with his legs all game and uh looked like he you know was, he was ready to fight through it you know didn't know if he was gonna come back out but you know wasn't also surprising because knowing the warrior that he is um shot set you for that but yeah um great game by him you know, they limited um, our time on the field. I, I venture to say the Cowboys had more time possession. They uh, outpaced us by 100 more, uh, or so more yards, which is crazy. But Jalen, peak efficiency here, 17 to 23, 207, two touchdowns and zero interceptions. Pass rating of 130.2. Um, he made the most of the time that he had in there. You know, a couple, a couple of throws he went back. Only one I would say that comes to mind is the third and three throw deep to A.J. Brown, it's like, bro, we only needed three yards. And keep the, that drive going, and we take more time off the clock, uh, less time for Dallas to have to try and mount a last attempt, um, last-ditch effort comeback, which we pretty much gave, it, gave him that. But that's not on Jalen. The play calling was way too conservative for our last two possessions. Um, we were playing not to, get, to lose instead of trying to go out there and win the game. You know, we took our foot off the pedal. It was 20 to um, 17 at one point, we should have been hitting that accelerator like a motherfucker. Instead, we, you know, we're like, oh, we're up. So many times over the past two years, what we've done is ease that ease that foot off and allow teams to come back into the games. We should have been pouring on the Dallas Cowboys, blowing this game open, not letting it sh shrink around us, you know. Um, but yeah, we'll get to other parts. Running backs, DeAndre Swift, Kenny Gainwell, Rashard Penny. I need more snaps for Rashard Penny and less for this guy. I don't know how we feel about Rashard Penny in pass protection. I know Gainwell is maybe our best back. And I haven't seen enough from Penny to know. Uh, I mean, give his time in Seattle. We could make um, gestulations. <laughs> we can make a, a conclude a hypothesis from that. But, um, you know, we do, or the, I should say the staff does trust Kenny. And he's a draft pick of ours, so you know we value that. And uh, he validated that, validated that um, opinion on that opening drive, 12-yard touchdown, uh, that jaunt flipping into the end zone, and uh, you know kind of quelling that drama, you know, from uh, last week with you know the cell phone <laughs> snafu. But um, DeAndre Swift, he came and played out, played well. 18 rushes um, for him. Not that doesn't reflect in the numbers, but you know he gave us a semblance of balance when we, you know we had the on the first drive and then the s first drive to um, begin the game after the Cowboys failed first possession three and out and uh, the third quarter first possession for us um, still not enough you know overall I'd like to for us to run the ball more but um, yeah it, it it's it, it's concerning. You see the you know the yards per carry going down each and every week. We gotta get this thing on track, do you know, some self scouting, and see what we're doing wrong and what we can improve upon. Um, 
strategy wise as well to get back to you know, a dominant running game which would lead to the passing game be more dynamic i don't subscribe to the philosophy that you know uh we run instead of the pass we should be doing the opposite but you know how they think here in philly but um this guy deserves more more snaps I mean, boston scott it's only because of boston scott being out that he got those snaps so you know it, it, it's frustrating but um yeah swift hold on you know hold on to the ball man he's been kind of in, not injury but fumble prone as of late we were fortunate that he you know we got back both that one where he ran into aj that's why we don't run motion I mean, not because we're not can't be good at it but it's not something we usually do so um we, we get we got cross up there i don't know who was at fault there but man that was a, almost a fucking disaster if one guy below who will point out didn't jump on that ball we would have been up Shit's creek giving dallas uh you all back in prime scoring uh territory instead we got it back and we were able to punt it back and made them have to try the length of the field which they did anyways but you know that's besides the point i had a wide receiver snaps no problems with aj we should have went to a more though um Trusting him more on one on ones and not it was the wrong timing. That third and three, that was the wrong time to go to him. Should have been earlier. Devonta Smith, also we should have went to him more. Only three targets hit caught all three for about fifty one yards, but you know, we need more. Went to uh, only made Zacchaeus two times. He could have seen uptick with, you know, the injury we're gonna talk about later. Um Julio Jones. Yeah. Um we have him in there for uh well for the hybrid role. Could be blocking, he could be getting the ball, but we're not gonna give him too much heavy burn. And Quez is coming back. I don't know how that affects the rotation. Um, like I said, we'll have to get to the guy below, but um, I like the number of snaps that they had. Olamide had an eight yard catch, um, missed the other target. I don't think we targeted Julio, but you know, he's always a threat, especially in the red zone for uh, t to get those uh, touchdowns. And especially with Dallas Got Goddard dealing with what he's gonna be dealing with we might actually um, highlight him more. And uh, these guys see an uptick in play. All right, tight end, there's no getting around it. Dallas Goddard has a broken forearm. He got injured on that 29 uh, or 28 yard reception. Dallas defender pinned his arm and was like, ah, I felt bad about it, you know, I had a bad feeling. Um, as he was, you know, running, I'm like, damn, something, I feel like something bad's gonna go down and got his arm pinned. I'm like, ah, it's not, doesn't look good. The way it went down, I'm like, ugh. Because you go for the stiff arm and it just it leaves you vulnerable to things like this, you know, how they might tackle you. And you tackle them just in an awkward, weird way. And um, he'll be out. But, you know, the fortunate thing is that uh, he'll be out maybe only four weeks, which uh, we have a bye week coming up and we don't play again until that Monday. So that's two weeks. We might only miss two games, Chiefs games and, and, and the following game. I don't know uh, what that is. For, uh, forget, but positionally three because we like to... Um, you know, to make sure that he's he's good to go. So that, that's three games. That be that would be a boon for us uh, compared to the four games he had to miss or five games he missed last year because we held him out for the Chicago game. But, um, man, we, this is a sigh of relief, you know, compared to, you know, could have been season ending if it was an elbow injury, but it's a broken forearm. So we catch a bit of a break there. But, you know, he's not, I would say injury prone, but, you know, he, he just had bad injury luck over the fast, past four seasons, missing time um, at least, I think, uh, a handful of games, four games or so, but um, yeah, that that's good news. But who's gonna fill his role? I, you'd like to see to say that we're gonna see an uptick with Jack Stoll, slot him in that starting role. He's not much of a receiver, so could, could Albert O get some burn? Because Grant Calcaterra is dealing with you know concussion issues, no time line on when he'll be back. Could finally see the debut of this explosive guy. Only concern with him is blocking. Um, other than that he could provide a pretty damn competent passing element and be kind of a hidden weapon for us over the weeks that Dallas is gone. And then in a role moving forward, you know, in the Calcaterra role, um, if, you know, he's up to snuff. So this could be, you know, uh, a critical time for us to find out, you know, this guy's contributions, whether they could be real or not. I'd like it um, if I knew, you know, e e which way, you know, either or whether he was going to be able to be dependent on to make contributions. But, I mean, just look at the tape time, you know, in Denver, tape explosive, but they didn't have him out there for a reason. They traded him for a reason, so we'll see. 
All right, offensive line. Um, I think for the most part, we played overall better game um, than we have the past couple weeks, and that maybe goes with you know Tyler Steen being put in there. Um, I know Landon. I saw some pressures, you know, uh, from him. I don't know if it maybe one for Jason, my lot of maybe a couple. Yeah, Lane letting up maybe two or so. Uh, but Lane played, I think, the best out of the group. Um, but, it's, you know, as a unit, I don't remember Jack Driscoll being in there. You know, maybe it was an unbalanced line or, or something like that. But um, Tyler Steen, you know, didn't do too bad. It is a baptism game, you know, by baptism by fire. Have to deal with uh, Michael Parsons. They put him everywhere, and they, they had him, you know, delayed rushes and uh, light him up directly up over the guard, you know, trying to find matchups for him. And he got some pressures, and, he, yeah, he got a sack and a half. Give him that. But overall, he wasn't a damper on this game. Um, didn't really factor in too much, you know. He got you know his numbers, and then you know he got some pressure, but it was, it was mostly quiet after that. You know, um, came in like spurts, and so wasn't a constant threat. And like for all the you know talk of him, I think actually noticing this, it took away from like what they do best: him flying off the edge, and uh, you know really collapses that pocket, really uh, makes you know the rush for everybody else. Putting him in different alignments, I think, really, it really kind of unsettled everybody else and to the detriment of their overall production and their overall, like, pass rush presence. So I actually think, you know, that worked for us, you know. I mean, and we kind of knew that he, you know, being in the interior, trying to attack the weakness so we could show up the other spots. So the other guys aren't, you know, super special. I mean, they're, they're good, they're talented, but, you know, we were able to hold them in, you know, uh, check because we could see where Mike my, my Parsons is slap protection that way or you know focus in on that and then you know have extra hands for other places or you know just trust other guys to do their job so I actually helped out so appreciate you Dan Quinn for making it simple for us um the edge rushers I mean like they, they just seen so many snaps over the you know past couple games I really want to get these guys incorporated more uh Brandon Graham I'm highly effective in, in in spurts that he played you know he got that sack and a half um, just took over and, and tear steel, man. Just, I appreciate you for being a drum that we could just beat all day. You know, um, you contributed like three, four, five <laughs> sacks. It's crazy. Um, cause you know, Tyron Smith, he looked revitalized. I mean, he was, he was stonewalling guys on this side. So, I mean, when he, the guy's right, man, he's, he's one of the best in the league. And, uh, he was shutting down Josh Sweat on that side. And you saw right when he flipped to that side, they put Sweat on the, on, uh, steel side to take advantage. And hey, when you see a weak point, you got to attack it. But um, yeah, I, I want to see the snaps reduced for these guys and, and see Nolan Smith. I mean, like at this point, just designate the pass rush role. Even then, I still think he gives us more than Barnett. But but Barnett is a solid run defender. And we lose that when we don't play him out there. So, I mean, it's a give and take. Um, Nolan's not ready at this point. You know, um, he's still green. He's wet behind the ears, and Brandon Graham, at this age, you know, we don't want to play him too much. So it really hurts us that we don't have a, that fifth guy that can be, you know, like, uh, that, or I should say that third guy um, that Brandon Graham was last year um, because I think we're f afraid to just uh, of over usage. And then if we, um, if he's less effective, we're going to have to rely on, on Nolan, and then where does that leave us? So I don't know if it's Patrick Johnson or somebody, you got, got to find somebody else to put in that rotation. Uh, I want to have five guys. Yeah, like his pizza. All right, um, interior line didn't get didn't get as much push, but they were dealing with you know um, a talented in trio trio set. I and mean, like Tyler Biddy is just a guy, but put him in, in between um, the younger the youngin Tyler Smith and then uh, the All Pro Zach Martin. Yeah, they can hide they can hide him. He can he can look decent. Uh, he can look he can he can not look like a liability. So um, they had, you know, tough sledding. And then, you know, all these guys are dealing with something. Is he fully recovered from the back? And he played, you know, a large number of snaps. He was effective at the end of the game, though, um, when, we, when we needed him. Mitchell Cox, you know, uh, just battling out there to consummate pro. Um, Milton Williams, you know, he's dealing with his shoulder and maybe still ankle. Jordan Williams, uh, Davis with that uh, the hamstring, still compromised. So um, the bye couldn't come at a better time to get these guys rested up and, um Hopefully they're, they're better, you know, af uh, after two weeks of rest, you know, in that Monday night football game. We'll see. We'll be doing that in live, but, you know, we'll be doing it delayed uh, without any information. So we'll see how that goes.
Um, let's see. Linebacker. Zach Cunningham, man. He's been a revitalized guy. Revelation at first at linebacker. Our best one. Played a high number of snaps. Uh, he was just yeah, hitting everything and anything that moved. Uh, laying big hits like he did you know, on Pollard. Flipping uh, Dak Prescott. <laughs> I love that uh, that meme, eight in one. You know, like with upside down Prescott. Um, or the dog pooping out Prescott. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he, he was great, man. Uh, Nicholas Morrow, he um, played a large amount of snaps because Dean went out with the injury. Don't know where he's at. You know, might be that same. I think it's the same foot, but I don't, don't know if it's the same injury. Uh, if he re-injured that foot, but I, I'm actually I'm not happy that he's injured, but taking a back seat because you know he hasn't played uh, very well overall. I mean, I think it's just a lack of experience. He's gonna do that on the job, but. Right now, it's, it's a liability to the, to, to the team overall. Um, I think, yeah, he, he can provide he can provide something that the other two don't. But that's that's if these you know these qualifications, these circumstances, you know, are met. But he's not getting it, getting it, uh, the job done. So um, I know there's some some other factors, but you know, also the way we deploy him you know, and the responsibility we're putting putting on him. But these two are playing better. Clip rate, so I think they they deserve, they deserve the snaps. Um, we'll see. Christian Ellis probably fill that role in uh, with Nicobe out, but it's to be seen how long he will be out. Um, the quarterback to safety. Let's just get there. Uh, James Bradbury didn't play very well, and it's concerning because it's been a you know recurring theme over the last couple of games. He hasn't played very well. I don't know what's going on. If he's dealing with the injury, he came out the game, was able to come back in. Doesn't look like anything serious, but. You gotta get better play on James Bradbury because he's not, he's not a man corner. Let's be honest, he's, he's his own guy. So um, get him in his comfort zone, no pun intended. Something that's needed moving forward. Darius Slay, he played the best out of these guys. If he would have had him on CeeDee Lamb full-time, I think you know he would have been able to, to have way better numbers. That being said, um, it would have compromised us as far as coverage wise. So he did play on CD at the end of the game in the slot and it, it uh, looked a lot different, you know. It had an effect, so uh, shout out to him. And Reed Blankenship, he had, um, you know, some good plays and bad plays, but um, crucial on that uh, goal line stoppage, just inches short of it being a touchdown. And the Cowboys fans are, are clamoring for it to be a penalty because he wrapped up. It wasn't impeding. They do that all the time. Look across the league. They do that all the time. If they have the arm on there and it's not impeding the receiver being able to catch the football, yeah. So, I mean, like, it, it, they were looking for P.I. there. You don't know football if you're calling for P.I. on that play. Uh, Kevin Biard, up and down, but he's still getting acclimated. I can't really judge him truly with – he doesn't have a full grasp on the, on this defense. Um, that being said, I, I, I will be watching moving forward to see if he can be a playmaker for us on the back end because he's been that in the past. So, um, we shall see. Eli Ricks. Uh, see, I mean, like, people were clamoring for him to get more snaps. This is what happens when he gets more snaps. I mean, like, he's going to get, not exposed, but, you know, you'll see him for what he really is. You know, he's, he's a guy that, you know, uh, has some talent. But let's not let that um, go to our heads. We'll play him in a role because he's not yet ready to, for a starting role in this league yet. He could come as soon as next year, but it's not right now. He's still learning. Um, and when we... When we Put him in good positions to, you know, to be successful, like having a safety playing over the top of him um, in bracket coverage. Yeah, he's able to go full out and, and use his tools. But, you know, he's not, you know, the corner that you know, he thinks that the the general public thinks he is. Not just yet. Cindy Brown, he struggled as well. Um, he's not a, 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 a man, a slot man guy as of right now. But it is, again, back to by fire. Going up against CeeDee Lamb, one of the better receivers in the league at what he does in the slot, you know, exposing you know, exposing guys in the slot. I mean, I don't see him as a true number one because of that, but hey, he's, you know, he produces. I'll say that. Um, but that's a tough thing to be, you know, especially craft a rookie with, uh, the task a rookie with. But yeah, he, he played well um, in, in, other, in other roles, but um, like being dying, patrolling in an area. He, he, you know, he's decent at that, but he's got a lot of things to learn. Josh Joe, you know, helping us out on one snap. 
um, wasn't a liability, I don't think. So, I mean, he's not his first time coming off the bench. So we were saved by that, you know, having that experience. So um, that's it, man. Going into the bye. And uh, before we do, we got to address some things. We already addressed that with Goddard. Um, hopefully, man, he, uh, well, he won't miss that many, uh, that many games overall. So yeah, the last fracture we dealt with was Andre Dillard. Is it, you know, non-displaced or, you know, um, how bad is it? Cause he already had surgery and, um, yeah, he, he wanted to make sure most likely to, you know, just get it done so he can get back on the field to his brothers. We'll see what the timeline is looking like, but four weeks, man, I'm like, oh, that's a far cry from what I thought was, you know, maybe uh, 12, you know, six to 12 weeks. All right. Um, Bradley Roby saying that he should be back after the Eagles bye weekend. Man, if he's back in the slot, that would solidify this, this secondary and allow us to play, you know, like with some continuity moving forward, barring, you know, no injuries. Um, but that would have a huge effect um, with him locking down that slot area. And then, you know, Eli Ricks and others being able to play sparingly instead of playing majorly. Because, you know, he he played very well in uh, his initial outings. You know, their outing or outings, I forget which one it was because we had so many guys shuffling in and out. Um, but him saying that he'll be back, yes, sir. That's very positive news. Um, there is on the outside, Bradbury on the outside, Roby on the inside. And then, you know, bringing in, um, bringing in Sydney for like, uh, three safety alignments and as well as like you know big dive taking out a linebacker putting him in um with ba uh, Bayard and Reed on the on the back end you gotta like that so anyways we'll get out here on that note but um, a little bit longer than I want to go but hey you're not even watching though so it's all good but I love talking about the Eagles and I love making these videos regardless so it's all good gonna chunk the deuces but as always as always it's fly Eagles fly and let's motherfucking go Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.